Well, to hear the Obama administration tell it, the typical American college is like war-ravaged Syria, but with a library. Sexual assault, we were told, afflicts one in five or maybe even one in four women on a typical campus, and a wave of executive orders and new programs were meant to fix it. But was there hype involved in those estimates, and were the people accused given due process? Stuart Taylor is a journalist and the co-author of a new book called The Campus Rape Frenzy, The Attack on Due Process at America's Universities, and he joins us now. Stuart, thanks for joining us. Thanks for being so with me. I have you. no doubt, obviously, sexual assault occurs on campus, and it's horrifying. Exactly. Um, but at what rate is the question, and at what rate are people falsely accused? What's the truth of that? You just wrote a book on that question. That's right, and sure, yeah, rape's terrible and it happens on campus, uh, stipulated. Uh, the idea that one in five uh, college women are raped or, or sexually assaulted more broadly while on campus is absolute nonsense. It comes from surveys by private organizations that have agendas, that ask misleading questions. They don't ask the women, were you raped or sexually assaulted, because they know they won't get anywhere near the numbers they want. There are pretty good federal surveys on this. They would suggest that one in 100, roughly, women are raped during their four years in college, five years. And uh, if you add lesser sexual assaults, less serious ones, you're up to about one in 40 or one in 50. That's way too many. But it's not the escalating national crisis that the Obama administration pretended it was. Now, in tandem with those claims was the idea that basically everyone accused of a sexual misdeed on campus was guilty. And my question for the beginning was, well, what happens to those people? Are they able to prove that they're not guilty, if indeed they're not guilty? Or is the justice system on campus anything like you'd expect in normal life? No, it's not at all. It's, it's a, a Kafkaesque campus kangaroo courts is my word for them. First, lots of people accused of rape or sexual assault on and off campus are not guilty, especially on campus, because there are squadrons of sex bureaucrats at all the colleges in the country who are encouraging women to say they were raped when what they really were was regretful afterwards. So, no, it's not one in five. And the, the, the kangaroo courts, the guys are almost presumed guilty, not innocent. They're not allowed to cross-examine their accusers. They're not allowed to see the evidence against them. They're put before impartial, you know, partial panels of feminist, uh, feminist ideologues a lot of time. The whole thing is outrageously unfair, and the result is that a number of people, there are about 100 plus who have sued, and there are a lot of those cases that we've seen, uh, and a lot of young men who are almost certainly innocent, or probably innocent, you never know for sure, uh, are being railroaded out of college based on bogus charges. See, what I've never understood is rape is one of the most serious of any possible crimes. Horrifying. So why would a campus be adjudicating that? Why wouldn't the police, who have a lot of experience with this, be in charge and the courts be in charge of determining what happened? It should be left to the police. The history is, decades ago, the police were not very nice to real victims of rape. Yes. They didn't take it seriously. I went to police districts. I heard them laughing about it. Uh, and so police got a bad rap. Yeah. And, and, and over time, they've gotten a whole lot better and more professional in handling these cases. But the feminist ideologues, the extreme feminist ideologues, man-aiding ideologues, a lot of them, uh, you know, don't get that. So they developed this movement. Well, the police won't, won't presume the guilt of the guys, and the campuses will, so let's have the campuses do it. And then the Obama administration uh, ratcheted that up on April 4th, 2011, by essentially ordering all of the 7,000-plus uh, campuses in the country that receive federal money to institute five specified new procedures, all of them designed to increase the probability of guilt, with an overhang of threatening to uh, bring bad publicity and maybe take the money away, federal money, from any college that didn't do exactly what the Obama administration ordered it to do. But As a result, even the ones who might like to be fair are not fair. It doesn't make sense, though. If you thought, if you sincerely thought someone committed sexual assault, I want that person in jail. Exactly. And, and, and it's so twisted that the Obama administration and the colleges really discourage young women who say they were raped from going to the police. Sometimes they go to the police, but the colleges tend to say, and the Obama said, don't trust the police, they won't be nice to you, come to us. And one thing that's blindingly clear about that is it's not making the campuses any safer. If you really believe that there's an epidemic of rape on campus, you want to put those guys in prison. Yes. The college process can't put them in prison. And unless you put it, you know, take them to the cops, which usually the colleges discourage, they'll just go on, if they're real rapists, they'll go on to the next place and 
keep raping. It's bewildering. I want people who commit sexual assault in jail. I mean, I do too. All right, Stuart Taylor, interesting book, Campus Rape Frenzy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure being with you.